Given the weather situation, it's really a nice day today. I'm thinking what we're going to do is go ahead and spray some bed liner. Now this is a technique called back taping. It's very useful in a situation like this. What it does is it prevents you from having a hard edge on your paint or your material. What you do is you take your sticky side up and you're going to push it on that side of our seam like this, leaving a lot of this tape exposed. And what we'll do is we'll come back with our drop cloth or plastic and we'll push it on the front and peel it back. And it'll give us a rounded tape instead of a sharp tape And that, in turn, prevents our material from having a very hard to find edge. Holes without threads, we're just going to tape the back side. With holes with threads, we're going to ball up the tape and push it into the thread. Cool. Masking material. The important thing is, is make sure that you don't have anything hanging off that's going to get caught up underneath the undercoating. The product I'm going to be using today is a 3 to 1 mix ratio spray-in bed liner. And it's white. It's a leftover from a project I did. So uh, it's white. Our final coat probably won't be white. This one is. Now a quick tip is to always try to hit those hard to reach areas first in your back corners and stuff because if you have to get up against an adjacent panel you don't want to be rubbing in that wet bed liner. So we're going to hit all these corners and everything first and then we'll come back through and we'll spray the easy to reach areas. It's also useful to keep a piece of cardboard around to watch that overspray. Yeah, now I can feel my bottle starting to get a little bit low, so I'm going to make sure I stretch this out in order to get one coat on everything. is done that's what we're left with you can see our coverage isn't perfect that's to be expected it's going to take more than one coat for sure so we're going to go ahead and set our clock for one hour now come back and do a secondary coat all right this is what we've got today we got one coat on yesterday this is united states of build came out last night and said it was time to stop working so unfortunately we only got one coat on that's okay the only problem with that is that this stuff will dry over your masking tape and sometimes create a little bit of additional headache, but we're just going to have to deal with it. So this morning we're going to go ahead and shoot on our next coat. 
We've got a light on inside to keep the sheet metal warm from the back side. It's a little bit chilly this morning. We're still okay in our window, our temperature window, but I like to have that metal, that substrate, a little bit warmer. As far as manufacturer's instructions, they say just degrease and reshoot. So no scuffing or anything like that. And there's no reason to degrease because I know last night that it didn't get any grease on it. So basically we're just going to mix up and start shooting. So you can see we got most of the black covered. That was a, a lot better of coverage coming back through the second time. And it is kind of nice having the alternating colors because you can really monitor your coverage. We've given this three days to dry and it is firmed up really, really nicely. I'm very happy with it. Now we do have a couple of spots that need attention. You can see here we've got some light coming through. That's very, very thin. We've also got a few pinholes right here. We've also got some small areas like this right here that's a, a seam. Another very small pinhole on here. We're just going to go over this thing and fix all these small little details before we put our next coating on. So I'm going to go ahead and be using a brushable seam sealer. This can be recoated in one hour. So we'll get it on there nice and thin. Thick enough to do the job, but a thin coating that will dry within that one hour window. And then we'll go ahead and move on to our other coatings. Now the only reason that I'm choosing to use a brushable in this case is because I don't want to open a whole nother tube and have it dry up. Only use a partial and then have the rest dry up. So I'm just going to use my can of brushable. This is a 08656 from 3M. To apply this I'm going to be using a polyester disposable brush that I've cut the bristles very short on. This isn't something that you want to rely on for connecting these panels and completely sealing them up, but it's, it's a very, very nice way to fill the gap or to cover that gap that your welder couldn't cover, especially on this, these old vehicles where the, the metal just isn't what a, a new vehicle would be. Now the nice thing about cutting these bristles short on these brushes is they become much more rigid and you can really force this seam sealer into those pinholes. Now, as you can see, we're not doing heavy, heavy fill with this stuff. We're just filling these small pinholes. I'm really pretty impressed with these two-part bed liner kits that you can get. This one is uh, really pretty substantial. I'm very impressed. I just want to mention to you guys, I always find it useful when you have these products that dry when they're exposed to the air, like a pour 15 or like these brushable sealers. Uh, take your old pair of gloves that you used if they're still in good shape, put it over top of your can. Just uh, cheap insurance, you know, instead of losing the whole can. Mix in some ceramic bubbles or microspheres as they're known, into this, and that's going to give us some sound deadening and heat insulation type properties. 